was here, we were discussing earlier, I don't know if it was a year or two ago, and he spent some time in the school, and I believe he had a concert here, I don't remember. But the kids had a blast with him, and I think you'll have also a good experience this evening. He has a tremendously magnetic personality, and of course, loads of talent. And um, I was saying, I was asking Tony earlier, I said, what would you like me to say? He said, well, he said, I played for the Pope, but I think it was 1987 when John Paul came to Los Angeles. And then from then on, he became a nationally and internationally recognized talent and uh, has traveled the country and traveled the world and uh, it brings a tremendous gift here this evening. So we're certainly pleased to have him here this evening. And so I said to him earlier, I'm not going to say much because you have to listen to me every Sunday. So we'll let uh, Tony play for you this evening. So Tony Melendez. Thank you so much, Father. It's so nice to be back. Uh, we did get the snow, got snowed in over in the retreat center, not too far, and over in Carmi. And I, now I'm losing my voice. I don't know what happened. So if I have a few notes that are a little bit of the... You know it's because I'm a little bit under in the voice here. In 1987, when I sang for the Pope, it was truly a big honor. What was I doing there? I was a gift given from the youth of Los Angeles. All I had to do, in a sense, is to serenade John Paul II with a song. There was four cities involved in a program, televised program, entitled Space Bridge. Each city had a gift. Some gave up some hours. And then I remember being introduced and singing this song. The day is filled with love. Today is like no other day before. And you and I will never be the same. self-motivation and family support. Our gift is music and a performer that says, when I sing, I hear the Lord. Holy Father, we are proud to present to you Tony Melendez. Yeah. Like no other day before, even more, you and I will never be the same.
Courageous young man, courageous young man, you are giving hope to all of us. My wish to you is to continue of giving this hope to all of you. To continue giving hope. Somehow, when the Pope said those words, it, it was as if there was a stamp on my forehead that said, Hope. All of a sudden, Tony Melendez was an ambassador of hope. Was I ready for it? Uh -uh. Did I know what was to come? No. But it got a little crazy. And I'm so grateful.
how this guitar is tuned. It's, it's tuned in open tuning. Uh, I've seen someone do this. This is not a new system. It's been around for generations. Um, even some of the rockers do it. When you mess with the new, different tunings, it, it, it changes the chord a little bit, but it sounds beautiful. And I, I took this tuning. I didn't think it would actually work. And all of a sudden, music started coming out of this guitar. I barricaded my, myself in my, my bedroom. Anytime anyone would come over, they'd ask my mom or dad or my brother or my two sisters. They would ask, well, who's playing the guitar? And uh, it was me in the bedroom. And they'd say, Tony. And they'd go, yeah, right. <laughs> How's a guy with no arms supposed to play the guitar? I was playing the guitar and I practiced a lot and I love music. My father played the guitar and my mom sang. So I inherited the music somehow. So once I got it tuned up, I started putting my toes on different parts of the neck and it just worked. So, uh, you know, as I got better and better, I started um, just writing music. This next song is a prayer that's been around for generations. So I went to my friend's house over here on the side. He plays keyboards, he plays guitar. And I asked him, man, help me put this to music, this prayer. And this is what came out at the end. You'll recognize it. It's a prayer that Catholics have recited.
Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor está contigo. Bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús. You raise your hand if you know what the word Catholic means. You cannot be a DRE. Okay, that's the only stipulation. Or a priest or a sister. But if you know what the word Catholic means, I'm going to give you a, a free CD. Does anyone know? If you turn off the spot just for a second, that way I look into the crowd. Are there any hands up? All right, in the front row here. Young gentleman in the red shirt. What does the word Catholic mean? It means universal. Universal. Right here in the front. Richard. It means universal. I was 40 some odd years old when I, when I learned what the heck universal was because I wasn't listening in my catechism. They showed it to me, but I was bullheaded. They should have hit me with a book. Universal, dummy. They say you gotta say it three times. Universal, 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 universal. Say it again. In order for it to stick with us, we are a universal church. I got a couple more CDs. If someone can tell me what the name of our new Pope is, we know him as Pope Benedict XVI. We know him as Pope Benedict XVI. What is his birth name? Raise your hand if you know. Raise your hand if you know. Over here, yes. Joseph. In that second row, a little out. No, it's not Dominic. No, no. Okay. Joseph Ratzinger, you got it, man. Come on. Here's an easy one. Nah, it's not that easy. You gotta come to this microphone and name seven sacraments and you get a free CD. You name all seven sacraments, I'll give one away. Baptism. There's one. There's one, so. Let's go to this gentleman in the third row there. Come on up, man. Baptism. One. From different countries, different parts of the world, we celebrate even a little bit different. Even our liturgy, our own mass, it's a little bit different, but pretty much the same. We are a universal church. Pray with me one more time. The Hail Mary, and we'll close it out. Dedicate this to someone in your life has cancer. Someone that's on their own, maybe you haven't seen them, you don't know where they are. So dedicate it to someone that needs a little prayer, especially now. While we're singing it, maybe two or three people you can pray for.
things about how we're supposed to act, how we're supposed to dress, the kind of money we're supposed to have, our dating, our love, everything. It can get so noisy. God is always speaking to us, but sometimes it's in the silence of our hearts. Amen? And I really say that to the youth here because God wants you just to spend time with Him in quiet reflection and in adoration. And listen for His still, small voice. The song kind of talks about that. It's very simple words. It's, we worship you, Lord. We praise your name. We adore you with our lives. I remember sitting before the Eucharist feeling very inadequate compared to the world. And it was like God just pierced my heart and said, you know what? Adore me with your lives. It's not about magic words or magic jobs or magic amounts of money. It's about just adore me with your life. So as we worship you, Lord, we praise your name. We adore you with our lives. We worship you, Lord, and we praise your name. We adore you with our lives. We worship you, Lord, and we praise your name. Well, the 
challenge, okay? Well, look at those. God gave you that voice. Give it back to Him. Another thing, I, I, this helps, I've heard. If you're afraid to sing, if you close your eyes, no one will hear you. So, let's just praise Him. Let it all go, those things that keep us from, you know, saying, you know what? Look in the mirror, not God's miracle. God's miracle. So let's just sing that we worship you, Lord. Praise your name. We worship you, Lord, and we praise your name. We adore you with our surgery on it. Uh, so for anyone that's feeling a little bit under the weather, we, you know, needs a little surgery, we'd like to just pray for you too. So we ask the Lord to watch over that. The Lord's always given me a little excitement. I never know what's going to happen sometimes. I've been to youth rallies where I thought I was going to go to a prayer meeting and all of a sudden it's a youth rally and I'm in front of like these junior high students. It's like, what am I supposed to do? But you know, God always somehow took care of us. And I know he'll take care of you. Hey, hey, 
those who that's weigh us, leave a footprint. I know he's leaving a footprint on that kid drum. It probably has a little marking there. And I'm hoping that he's leaving an imprint in your heart. Put your hands together for our drummer and bass player, Mr. Kim Bo. Timothy, <laughs> you know you're not supposed to play Tony's guitar. You told him! <laughs> Lady, yeah, but see, uh... <laughs> she told me to do it! <laughs> now, Tim, don't blame her. Or the rest of them. I know who it was.
that would be fine too. I won't get close to the guitar. Or the altar. I get a lot of reports from parents that their furniture has been antiqued by their kids. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> Will you sing a song with me? Yes. Will you sing, sang a song with me? Yeah. It's a song that's been around for a little time. And you parents, you forgive me. I'm asking for your forgiveness now for what's going to happen. <laughs> no, this song has been around for quite some time. And if you recognize it, sing loud and strong. You see, it was written by a slave ship owner. Now this slave ship owner, you see, way back in the beginning of his life, he knew our Lord quite well. He was raised in a God-fearing family. Somewhere along the way, he lost his way. And he wound up being in that situation. And one day he just got sick of his evil ways. He looked up at our Lord and said, Lord, my God, my Lord, I've lost my way. Lord, I'm responsible for the maiming and the killing of your people. Lord, if you can change my heart and change my life, I will give you everything I have and everything I own unto your service. And so his life did change. And the Lord gave to this man many beautiful hymns, this being one. So every time you remember this hymn, remember that story. It goes something like this. Repeat after me, please. Repeat that, please. <laughs> you know that lady? It goes something, it goes something like this. You guys are crazy. <laughs>
música empezó uh, de chiquitito. Mi mamá cantaba, mi papá tocaba la guitarra. Yo creo que yo decidí eso también. No lo pude dejar como se fina normal para yo poder tocar la guitarra. Pero al final la guitarra yo me... Y yo practicaba hasta menos unas 6 a 7 horas. Y con eso la música empezó a oírse como música. Dios me ha dado fuerza, Dios me ha dado a mi familia, Dios me ha dado la música, con la, mi música yo me siento bien conectado con mi Dios. Eso me ayudó a crecer, me ha calmado el corazón. La gente me ha preguntado, Tony, ¿por qué te sentí tan entero? Porque tengo estas cosas que me hacen todo, tengo mi familia que es preciosa, mi corazón quiere bailar, quiere cantar, quiere vivir en la vida, porque en los ojos de mi Dios, yo, yo soy entero. Eres mi Dios, y en ti confiaré, mi amor por ti.
day that's hard. But God loves you. He needs us all this night. First, all by myself, and then all of a sudden, I had a little help from the older brother, my older brother. I told him, I'll say, I don't know if we're going to eat a week from now, a month from now. He was trucking at the time, and all of a sudden, he started traveling with me all over the world. We've gotten to go to every state in the United States, meet Mother Teresa. We've been invited to the countries, and the president meets with us. What's so special about a Tony Melendez? It's not Tony. It's hope. It's a little light of hope. That's a true blessing. And this man had no clue what he was getting into. When he said, okay, Tony, I'll help you with the phone calls. handed it over to him because they were calling like crazy. Let me introduce you to the older brother, Jose Melendez. Lent is a funny time. We slow down. It's a time to do some soul searching, to to repent, the church goes quiet and reflection begins and we do missions and we don't say the A word. And I believe that for us, when Pope John Paul II kissed Tony, he also gave him a mission with that kiss when he told him to continue being hope. Now what do we know about hope? Not a whole lot. But God uses us to touch others. Now I know we were supposed to be here on Thursday, but we're here on Monday. And uh, you still came, so thank you for coming back on Monday. But I think, you know, I know the church isn't full, and that's okay. It's about one of you. God must have called one of you here today. And one of you will walk away from your change, I pray. Maybe one of you needed to hear what Tony sang or said or Pat or myself or somebody. Then that's truly what it's about. And that's why people sacrifice so much, even our own family sometimes, so that... And I remember my daughter saying, Daddy, when's your last concert going to be? And she would ask that a lot. And I always felt guilty. And so I prayed about it. And then one night, prayer time, I said to her, honey, you know, people keep calling us. And God uses what we do to give people hope. And that's, I don't know when the last concert will be. Probably when Uncle Tony says, I don't want to go no more. And you know, she, we were praying. And so she just looked at me. And she got real quiet. And at the end of the prayer, she said, well, I guess if God needs you, it's okay. And you know, she hasn't asked me that since. And the other day we were driving the car and I asked her, I said, what do you think about that? Well, I still miss you, Daddy, but it's okay. And today when I was working on the trailer, fixing, because there's always something to be fixed, 
And you know, we got held over. We sat at the retreat center for almost two days, two and a half days without doing anything. You know, you, you, you wonder, what's God, what's God doing in this? And uh, maybe we needed the rest, I don't know. But there's so many things, and I'll close with just the, the Frisbee story because people often ask, and uh, you know, when we were growing up, the hardest thing for my two sisters and I was how people just responded and looked at Tony. They looked at him as a disabled person. They didn't know him. I think you today understand he's not disabled. He just doesn't have arms, but he does everything else. And I remember Tony had to learn how to do all the things that he does, even to play the guitar, and, you know, to dress himself, all those things. And when he learned how to do all those things because he used to go to a special school, he said to my parents, I want to go to the regular school. And I remember the first day we went to the bus stop together, those kids that knew me were introduced to Tony, and the minute they saw him, they just stopped. They just stared, they got quiet, uncomfortably. And the closer we got, the harder they stared, and the more uncomfortable it felt. But then we get to the bus stop and my bus arrives. I get on the bus, the doors close behind me, and I kind of do one of these because I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I didn't have to fight, I didn't have to do anything. And I sat at the back where I always sat, and then I looked forward, and I remember seeing the kids, some of them others, just trying to see Tony. And then the bus pulled away and they sat down and I remember hearing the remarks and the teasing and the words. And I remember hanging my head in shame and in embarrassment that Tony was my brother. And then we get to school and I remember it's lunchtime and I forget all about the moment I just want to play with my friends. And as I get close enough to overhear the conversation, they're making fun of them, and they're my best friends. I found the loneliest spot in the playground, I just sulked the rest of the day. And when I went home, I walked into my mom's bedroom and I said, Mom, why can't I just have a normal brother? I don't want a disabled brother anymore. I want one that nobody stares at, one that can throw a frisbee, catch a ball. Why can't I have him like that? I remember my mom grabbed me by the shoulders and she looked into my eyes and she said, God made him that way. Forget what the world says and do what Tony does. Ignore it all. Let the world say what they want. And then she hugged me and I felt like the weight of the world had been taken off them and I turned around to just go play and then Tony standing in the doorway and I look into his eyes and I know my words have hurt him and he turns and he leaves and I go after him for a ball and apologize and when I catch up to him, he's coming out of our bedroom and he's got a frisbee between his chin and shoulder. And he convinces me to go outside and I get on one end, he gets on the other and I just don't know what else to do so I throw it to him. And he catches it like that. I remember thinking, he can't throw it back. Let's just go in. Thanks, Tony. Forget it. Forget the rest. And Tony already had the frisbee between his toes, and he looks into my eyes, and without using any words, he just said, let me try. And he flung his foot back. He flung forward, and this thing just came flying true and hard right at the bridge of my nose. <laughs> and I remember falling on my rear end and looking up, and I remember thinking, and seeing his eyes, with his hands for the first time in my life. Because I started using the eyes of my heart. Because I realized in that moment, you and I are more disabled than Tony will ever be. Because you and I give up. You and I say we can't. And we stop hoping. I've never seen Tony do that. Not even in his lowest moment. He always has had that connection with God. He's always had that wholeness in him. I know it's Lent and you know we're breaking some of the rules by doing maybe what we're doing, I don't know. 
But it's a time of reflection, and it's a time to see. And sometimes we have to see to believe. And so that day, I took the frisbee and I very gently just tossed it to Tony. And he caught it just like that. What are you going to do with your dreams? This frisbee represents your dreams. I'll tell you, he's thrown that frisbee and I've dropped it ten times in a row. Throw it again, I said, throw it again. Ten times, finally. you got to keep trying. Never give up. And let your dreams soar. And let it soar high. Don't let this frisbee hit you in the face. of reflection, a time to see miracles. There's a guy playing the guitar with his feet. The tricky part is we're all miracles, because we just are. In this moment, I have to ask you to help us continue this mission. and. It doesn't work without you. It works with your generosity. It works with you helping us. Tonight, we're going to ask you for an offering. And that offering is coming right back here to this parish. To help the youth, to help the program here, to pay for events like this. And I know we're going through economic tough times. And I know maybe you can't give. So there's three ways you can help us. The first is prayer. Just pray. Pray for us. Pray for the church. Pray for yourself. Pray for your needs. The second is, and the only commercial you'll get tonight, if you like the music and you like to take it home, it's, it's at the exits. I'm not sure which one. The CDs, the books, and all that stuff. And the third is the offering. Mother Teresa was once asked, well, how much should we give, Mother? And she said, until it hurts. When we give sacrificially, whether it's money, time, whatever it is, I see it even in what we do in the travel. We get so much more when we truly make the sacrifice. can't give anything, don't be embarrassed. Let the past get this pass and pray. But for those select few, they say that you give the last thing that you hear. So I'm going to say that maybe some of you can give 20s and 50s. And maybe somebody in here can write a check for a thousand. Honestly, or five or ten or maybe a hundred thousand or maybe even a million. Who knows? I'll just let that simmer out here and see how it goes. <laughs> Whatever you can give, we will be grateful and God will be grateful. So pray for the miracle. Father, we thank you for the blessings of this church. We ask you to bless them. You know the needs here. Father, bless them. Hold them. Help us to listen to your still voice in the quiet. Help us to pray. Help us to hope. Help us to hang on. Help us to forgive. Help us to hear you in our church and at home. Thank you. Bless us. We ask these things in your name. Amen. At this time, I'd like to ask the kids to pass the baskets. If you can write it, if you're going to write a check, make it out to the church of St. Thomas and continue to pray and sing with the guys as we take up the offering. God bless you and thank you for coming out tonight.
some humble people that are part of my bunch here. The Tow Jam crew. They're great guys. On the way out, we'll meet Jorge Rodriguez. He's doing the product for me. He drives and lifts and sets up the sound. Helps me in other countries by receiving calls. Al Myers. He's doing the lighting for us tonight. He also drives. He's a drummer at heart. And he's given up his time and his strength. He has a strong grip. Wonderful guy. Helping him tonight on the spotlight. My sister's son. His name is Raymond. He's an incredible guitar player. And one day I'd gladly get out of the way and let him do the guitar playing. He could thrash. He's good. He could rock it up. I pray for his music and I pray that he has the strength to always go forward. Doing the sound for us. Still studying in drama, theater. Maybe one day we'll see him behind the scenes here on Broadway, helping out with the staging, sound, lighting, sets. I pray that one day in his studies, and I'm glad that he's with us, that he can do wonderful, wonderful things with his talent. I'm going to ask you to help me sing. Humble thyself. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he